What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and welcome to some more r slash am I the butthole stories. If you do love a Reddit story, don't forget to hit that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And before we do jump into today's stories, I just want to thank Annie Lucy and Becky Hartley for your rejoins today on YouTube. It means the absolute world to me. Some of you guys have been with me for over a year now crazy stuff but thank you so much to everyone for your love support and time towards the channel well, let's get started with today's stories much love guys now today i spotted a cheeky little update to a story we read a couple of days ago so as always i'm going to read the story again then we're going to cover some of the comments and then we're going to move on to the updates so if you heard the story before always feel free to use the timestamps that's what they're there for. So let's get in to today's first story. And it's from her wedding day titled, Am I the arsehole refusing to walk my daughter down the aisle? And as I said, we do have an update which follows. My daughter, 26 female, and I haven't spoken in years. When she was 15, we found out she wasn't my biological daughter. And my wife had cheated on me years ago with a friend. As it turns out, this so-called friend was suddenly interested in playing dad. My wife and I divorced, my daughter learned the truth, and I told her I still loved her no matter what. Of course, she was interested now in getting to know her biological father, and while it hurt, I tried to accept that. She started pulling away from me after that, even when trying to still do things together as a family, she was no longer interested. The last straw was when she was 20 and living at my house. We were arguing because she dropped from her college courses, hasn't done anything for three months and mad because I told her she either needed to go to school or work if she wants to stay here for free. She told me I'm not a real dad so stop pretending like I am and she'd just go stay with her real father. That broke me honestly but I told her if that's how she really feels then there's really nothing left to say between us and she did move out to go live with him. I was depressed for a very long time, drank so much. My son, 24 male, was my only reason to keep moving forward. For the first couple of years, I reached out to my daughter. She wanted no contact. I learned to accept that and move on. It helped me find more peace in my life. My son stopped talking to her for a while over this and was angry with her. They still chat sometimes, which doesn't bother me at all. Through him, I learned her biological father died in October 2019. Also that she's engaged. She reached out to me. First that she knows that we haven't talked in a while, but wants to ask me if I'd be willing to walk her down the aisle. After a pretty long message about how much she hurt me in the past with her actions, I told her no. She didn't want me to be a father anymore, so I learned to no longer view her as my daughter. This turned into a fight between us, because according to her, it's not her fault. She wanted to know her real dad. And I agreed with her it's not, but what was her fault was how she treated me ever since. In my mind, I know if he hadn't a past, we wouldn't even be speaking right now. It ended with telling her, I hope she enjoys her wedding, but I want no part of it or her life. My son's told me she's ranting to my family that I'm ruining her day, and she thought parents are supposed to love their kids unconditionally. My brother seems to think that now I'm being an asshole and this is my chance to be in her life again, but I have no interest in that. Still seems everyone has a strong opinion on it and I'm making it difficult for my daughter to have the wedding she wants when it would mean a lot to her. My son is on my side but the comments are still wearing me down and just for the sake of my sanity, am I being an asshole? And I remember the comments of my own thoughts being, you know, she decided that you, she didn't want you as a father, she got a biological father now and you sort of moved on with your life. You respected her decision and then you just went your separate way so I can't blame you for feeling the way you do in this situation. You're totally valid to feel that way. And there was a couple of comments that was sort of getting me to waver. One that was asking, you know, she was a, at a very young age when she first found out about that stuff. And, you know, teenage emotions are all over the place. It, and maybe with everything that's going on and seeing her biological father die, maybe, you know, something went in her head and it went shit and, and wants to reconcile. There is that possibility, right? But we'll cover a couple of the comments and we'll move on to the update. One from Cloth Diaper Addicts who says, Not the arsehole. She decided that you're not her father in any capacity. You respected that. Now the other guy is dead. She doesn't get to change the rules. She doesn't want you. She wants someone to play a part. Maybe your son can be the one to give her away instead. Not a robot honest says, Not the arsehole. Wow, OP. I'm sorry to read through your story and some people may disagree, but I don't really think you're the arsehole. You attempted contact throughout the years, but it wasn't you that became distant. It was your daughter. 
She wanted to get to know her bio dad. Nothing wrong with that, but at the expense of becoming distant and eventually having no contact with you. Her dad, who had been there for her since she was born. Now the bio dad isn't there to walk her down the aisle. OP, if she wanted you at her wedding, you would have gotten an invitation and not become a stand-in for a deceased bio dad. Why can't her brother walk her down the aisle? Personally, I just think she wants her wedding to look good, irrespective of how you feel. Not the arsehole at all. Groomer says not the arsehole. She's just mad that this will ruin her day, has no concerns over your thoughts and feelings. Raymond Beaumont says, and quotes, in my mind, I know if he hadn't a past, we wouldn't be even speaking right now. And it says, and you are almost certainly right. She was an adult when she decided that she didn't want you in her life. It's sad that it was a bad decision, but it was her decision, not the arsehole. And one more before we move to the update from SS Trihan, who says, not the arsehole, to quote the parlance of kids these days. She fucked around and now she's finding out. Of course, it's not her fault. She wanted to know her biological father. It's absolutely her fault that she ended up burning the bridge with her dad. You raised her for over half her life, not knowing she wasn't yours. She should have been a lot more grateful for the part you played in her life than she was. It's an interesting idea, isn't it? The familial love should be unconditional, but more and more often we're seeing people correctly realizing that cutting out toxic family members is okay and that nobody is ever obligated to set themselves on fire to keep other people warm. The thing with that is, while it's often used to submit to kids that they don't need a relationship with their parents, the street goes two ways. It's absolutely fine to realize that it also means parents don't need to maintain a relationship with their toxic kids. She doesn't get to cut you out of her life as a father when it suits her and decide you need to resume the role no questions asked without complaint when the guy she replaced you with isn't around anymore. So let's check out the update to see what that says. Update says, thank you for your support, especially those fellow parents who reached out in my messages. Advice, judgment, and suggestions on what to do about my family. It took sending a mass text to everyone who wouldn't leave me alone about this. It took me some time to think about of what to write and clear my head from everything. The reminder of everything that I did over the years to try to be in their life and where that all ended. How detrimental it was to my mental health. They all remember how it was like. How much it put me in a dark place that took lots of therapy and the need to be there for my son to get out of. My brother called me after. He apologized for the way he was pushing this. We had a much longer conversation. I told him my decision to remain out of her life was final, so he respected that. Since no one else had said anything, I'm hoping that means everyone else got the message. Best thing some suggested here was blocking out the others saying things and her. It wasn't doing my mind any good. I spoke to her over the phone to talk about the way she's been behaving online and the others in the family. I apologize for how things happened and wish she didn't have to deal with these life-altering moments at such a young age. She made her choice for the past six years, just the way I have. Even asked her to be honest with herself and answer. Not to me. If her biological father hadn't passed, would we be here right now speaking to each other? She didn't say anything, but that's fine. It's a question for her to honestly answer to herself. Like I did before, I told her to enjoy her wedding and hope it's a lovely, healthy marriage. And this door to our relationship is closed. Hope she can find peace with that and enjoy her life the way I have. Conversation ended shortly after that. She didn't say if she would stop saying anything about me online, so I just made sure to block her and others on her mum's side of the family to make sure there's no more bothering. This is the peace of mind I needed and glad to have taken up this advice. And I think that's like a positive update as we're going to get in this situation. I think I'm really happy that the, the two brothers have got together and the brother apologized to OP in this one. It almost sounded like the, in the original post that the brother was acting a bit rash and not really thinking things through and after taking a bit of time, you know, has really seen what it's all about. And I think the part where you said, would we be here right now speaking to each other, you know, if the biological father hadn't passed and she didn't say anything, I think that was very telling and it may have been a real self-reflecting moment for her where she probably just sat there and went, oh shit, you're right. And I think you are correct in blocking her as well because if you totally want her out your life, I think the post from, just from the way I'm reading this and the feeling I'm getting in this one, you know, especially with the mum involved as well, that on the online stuff wouldn't stop. So it's best to just cut that out because it's all going to be negative, isn't it, in the end? And what you don't need that in your life at the moment. So absolutely not the asshole, even with the update. So let me know what you guys think of this one and we'll move on to another story. 
And our next story also follows with an update from Ordinary Bicycle 837 titled, Am I the asshole for taking in my sister without giving a heads up to my husband? Hear me out. I was at my parents' place. I was over to help out my mum my out with the garden. My younger sister is staying at home for college. It seems dad was yelling at her about something. He checked her phone and found out that she is a lesbian. My mum was watching her yell at him and backing him up. My sister was just crying. I'm a pretty soft-spoken person and I couldn't stop my dad from yelling, but when he was done, I told her to pack her stuff and took her to my place. She is a pretty sensitive person and my parents are pretty assertive and rude sometimes. I tried to text my husband, but he was in a meeting and he rarely checks his phone while he works. He was surprised to find my sister in our home. I talked to him about it and he is okay with it, but he is upset on two counts. The first being that I didn't give him a heads up and hates being surprised by anything and that he will have to give up his quiet room, which he uses to de-stress after work. He just hates having things jumped on him. He knows she has to stay here for a while and it makes sense. I feel like an asshole as I should have done things a bit more calmly. I should have talked to my husband before getting her out of there. I was pretty emotional during this whole thing. It was one of the worst things I have witnessed. I know how much he loves this room and how great it has been to his mental health to have a place to be alone and process things. It has helped our relationship a lot. I feel like I'm not prioritizing him here and I took a major decision without consulting him. I think you were correct in your last line where you said, I feel like I'm not prioritizing him. And that wasn't a bad thing. In that particular situation where, you're, where you saw your sister pretty much being abused for being a lesbian. And of course you're gonna be emotional. And at that particular moment, your priorities are for your sister. And I think you did perfectly the correct thing in this situation. And it's not like you came into this story and sort of said, F your husband, he, his feelings don't matter in this situation. You are concerned for your husband. You are concerned that he, he needs his quiet space to de-stress and it's been great for your relationship and all this sort of stuff. And I think he kind of understands in, in this moment as well that that needed to happen. And of course, everyone doesn't like having stuff as a surprise. I wouldn't like someone, a surprise person being in my house. But with the story and the context and everything that goes with it, I think I would understand as well. And to me, I, I think your husband does understand just from this little story that we've read here. And I think like a simple sit down, chat with him about, you know, possible timelines and what you could do in the future to help your sister out will clear things up and put his mind at rest. But some of the comments before we move up to the update with Tyler Wave who says, no one's an asshole here. You protected your sister and that makes sense. In an emergency, sometimes you have to do things right now and you didn't try not to tell him. Things just came to a head in that moment. He's allowed to be annoyed. There wasn't a discussion and that he's lost quiet space. Cranberry says no one's an asshole. Of course he's thrown off by a new person in the house without prior discussion but it sounds like you get over it. Sure, it would have been nice to do this calmly and less urgently, but you did what you had to do to help your sister. A deleted user says no one's an asshole here. You need to get your sister out of a bad situation and with basically no notice. You did try to inform your husband, but he didn't happen to check his phone after work, so he got surprised. As someone who also considers home a quiet sanctuary, I can see why your husband is a bit distressed. Very private people feel obligated to behave differently when others are in their house. And it can be exhausting to feel like you have to be on all the time and not really have anywhere to escape to decompress. By what you wrote in your post, your husband logically understands why your sister is there. If he's seen how your parents treat her, then he probably even agrees with getting her out. Still, since he values his privacy and space, I think you and he should sit down and do some brainstorming about how to help support your sister long term. I don't think she should stay past the end of summer presuming hubby can manage having a house guest even that long. So first priority is figuring out where she will live when her classes resume in the fall. Once that's settled, decide between you if you're both okay with her living with you for the rest of the summer, or if she needs to find somewhere else to live before then. And one more from Chair Manka 93 who says, no one's an arsehole here. I can't call husband an arsehole for being thrown off like this. He does deserve a say in the matter. You're only protecting your sister. So I can't say you're the asshole either. Now we'll move on to the update to see what that says. So update, this is a strange update. My sister moved out, ended up leaving within a month, but her stay with us was illuminating in many ways. The things my sister pointed to me helped me realize that our marriage was designed to cater to all his wants and to meet bare minimum of my needs. I tried to bring this up with him, small things which can make me feel better, but he didn't want to. 
I suggest a couples therapy and he thought it was just a process of blame being pinned on one of us. I started therapy with my own money and he was upset that I was wasting it when I was perfectly fine. I started to paint again, something that he didn't like and he didn't scream at me, he just changed his routine a little so that I had less time to paint and make a mess which he had to witness while I painted. My marriage was built around not making him sad. Throughout the relationship, I was the one who was responsible for his feelings and I was the one who had to set mine aside to make him happy. I got out and I'm living with my sister. They had an extra room they had been looking to sublet and I took them up. It's funny that I ended up in the same position that my sister started the post in. I'm not happier, I miss him and I've spent almost nine years with him, but it is liberating not to spend hours molding myself to make him happy. I'm a lot more calmer now. I really want to thank the commenters who planted the seed of doubts about my husband. Wow, and that was an unexpected update. One that, I, that was a surprise update. And I'm just going to read one comment. A lot of comments are just saying like congrats on, you know, getting out of a, a relationship that you thought wasn't right for you and all that kind of thing. But Sabriel says, I was really surprised that the original top comments were saying no one's an arsehole here. I don't feel like your now ex had any right to be mad. He didn't get a warning. And it seemed crazy to me that he was more upset at losing his quiet room than your sister's situation. While he had a right to be a bit taken back, the right response to your sister's situation should have been, oh my God, how awful. Of course, you can stay here until she can sort something more permanent out. You made a brave, bold move and I'm glad you're healing. Remember that it is never selfish to take care of yourself and sometimes that means putting yourself first. I'm happy for you, even if this will be challenging time for you. You should be very proud of yourself. What are your thoughts on this story? What do you think about the original post? Was you concerned about some of the things that was in the first post? Clearly that's, that's brought on to this update. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Keanu Love 99 Am I the asshole for canceling movie night with my boyfriend after what he did? I'm a movie lover, I love watching TV shows and movies like Star Trek, The Greatest Showman, Star Wars, and I have tons of favorite actors like Jake Gyllenhaal and Robert De Niro and Keanu ugh, Reeves. <laughs> I even have rituals for when I watch movies, especially new ones. My boyfriend Andy and I have a movie night every Thursday, together for nine months by the way, we don't live together. He has a habit of googling spoilers whenever we're watching a movie for the first time. It may not be a big deal, but I hate it. I hate it when he does that. It ruins the mood, the excitement of the movie, and so far he's ruined over 14. What would have been great watching experiences. He did it again after I had a talk with him about it. He says he just can't help it, but I said I can't let him ruin the one thing I'm so madly interested in. I can't even enjoy our Thursday movie night anymore because of it. He said I was right and promised he won't do it again. Heck, he even promised he won't keep his phone with him and he will leave it elsewhere. This past Thursday, he came over to my place so we could watch a new movie together. I prepared popcorn and drinks and we sat on the sofa and started watching. It was a great movie choice. I was in the mood slash excited to see how events turn out. Andy's phone was in the kitchen so I don't have to worry when he started moving in the sofa looking uncomfortable. I kept staring at the screen and in a few minutes I heard tick, 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 tick keyboard sound. I turned my face and saw Andy had my phone in his hand and was seemingly looking up spoilers for the movie. I was like, you know, you know, what the hell did you do that for? You also took my phone. I got mad he just kept smiling at me with his sharp teeth. He promised, <laughs> what? He promised he won't spoil it for me and I can trust him this time to not say anything. I took my phone back hoping I'd still find out what happens in the movie on my own. He kept harassing me, asking if I wanted him to tell me what was going to happen at the end. I said no. Minutes later, he spoke up and said, Hey babe, I just wanted to tell you that XYZ will happen at the end. I blew up. I yelled, calling him unbearable and selfish to have ruined yet another great movie watching experience. He said he wanted to ease my mind about the ending after seeing me so worked up like that. But I said I was done and cancelled our Thursday movie night and will have a girl night with my girls instead. He got offended saying I overreacted over a movie and that he was hurt after I cancelled our special night of the week together. We usually end up having sex later on, so I get why this was a big deal for him. He left and then texted me later saying I ruined the night and was hard on him since this is a habit of his that's hard to get rid of. But he's trying and I'm not giving him a chance. He wants me to reconsider. 
Now, I myself, I'm someone that likes to read ahead of things before I watch a movie. I don't know why I like to do it. Not all movies, by the way, but I just like to get a little taste of what's going to happen. But never, ever would I tell someone else about what's going to happen. That's the worst thing you can do. And I don't think I've ever had a friend that would spoil a movie for me either. They always come to you, I, oh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna ruin the movie for you. I'm not going to tell you. And I'm always sort of like, well, I don't really mind. So you can tell me. And then they go on to tell me. But I would never, like in the middle of a movie as well grab someone else's phone find out what it is find out what's going to happen and then quickly blurt it out he clearly just wanted to ruin the end of the movie for you he got something out of it by doing so so i can't blame you this is something you love to do and he's just ruining the experience so why would you want to continue that experience as well absolutely not the asshole to me Maleficent ad says not the asshole he's a total asshole i'm going to be blunt he really gets off ruining things for you there was a post a while back where this guy did it to his co-workers. You know what happened? If I recall correctly, they no longer hang out with him because he refused to stop. He's never going to stop because frankly, the look of disappointment on your face gives him a power boner and that power boner overrides his valuation of your feelings. Also, you shouldn't have had sex after that because as long as he got off, he wasn't losing anything. It's not a small thing for someone to actively enjoy sucking the joy out of your life. Scuba CC says, not the asshole. Do not date a movie spoiler. In general, do not date someone that spoils life's little pleasures for you. Moy Valley Girl says, not the asshole. This is horribly toxic. I feel it's super manipulative. He would make it seem like you are the unreasonable one. Is it worth it? Sassy Heather says, not the asshole, and break up with him. If he can't even respect movie night, why do you think he'll respect anything else, like your relationship, for example, or you? Just Killing Time says, not the asshole, I admit, I spoil movies for myself, but I would never ever share anything I have read with anyone else. That is just rude. This is also a red flag because if he can so easily ignore you over something small, he's not going to do it for anything else. Now, what do you think about this one? Put yourself in that position. Someone sat there, you're watching a movie together and then suddenly blurts out the ending just like that. How would you feel? How would you react? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Forsaken Seesaw 4069 titled Am I the Arsehole for Revealing the Truth About My Sister's Pregnancy? I-29 male have two sisters, Sierra who is 33 and Selena who is 27. They are both married and are also both pregnant. Sierra has been trying to get pregnant for many years while well, this will be Selena's second child. Our whole family is excited for them, of course, and since I am close to both of my sisters, they gave me their gender envelopes so I can plan the celebrations. I am an event coordinator. The original plan was to have a double gender reveal first, then to have a double baby shower later. However, last minute Sierra told the family that she would just have one big party in order to save money and time, and also because COVID numbers are rising again. We all agreed and I revealed to the family that both of my sisters are having girls. We just had their party last month and everything went well. I threw the most lavish party I could come up with for my future nieces. However, last week I was over at Sierra's house and went into her bedroom to grab a pen from her desk. When I opened the drawer, I found an open gender envelope addressed to Selena. I saw that Selena was actually having a boy, not a girl. When I confronted Sierra over text about having Selena's open envelope, she confessed that she switched the envelope before I took it to plan the party. She also confessed that she is pissed about Selena's being pregnant for a second time, and that it's not fair, her first child, to have to share the spotlight, especially considering the years of infertility she faced. She made me promise not to tell anyone. I sympathized with her at first, but I asked her, what's the point for changing the gender? Sierra said, and I quote, I tricked Selena into coordinating her baby registry list with mine. So whenever she finds out she's actually having a boy, she can give me her registry things. Plus, she's already had a son and her husband is a doctor, so she can afford to buy new things for her son or just rely on hand-me-downs. That statement felt so disgusting to me and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. What's even worse was that yesterday, Selena and her husband came back from the doctor's office and were heartbroken to find out they're actually having a boy because they already made a girl nursery room. She apologized to me profusely about having to plan the wrong gendered party and other guests wasted money on the wrong gendered things. When I saw tears in both her and my brother-in-law's eyes, I couldn't stop myself from confessing the truth. Rightfully so, they both became extremely angry and told our family what I told them. As of right now, Selena is only talking to me and nobody else. Sierra, on the other hand, got the whole family on her side. 
My family told me I had no reason to cause drama. They're also telling me that Sierra's health is at risk from all the stress and if something that happens to her first and possibly only baby, I am at fault. But frankly, I don't give a damn about Sierra anymore. So, am I the arsehole? But we'll start with Dobo Credo Kiev who says not the arsehole. When did we decide pregnant women can do no wrong and carry a baby excuses you from being an arsehole? It's absolute BS that your family are giving the sister a pass at a shitty behavior. You absolutely did the right thing and it's absolutely not your fault if anything happens to a baby. Your family are wild to take her side. Don't be shy, show them this post. Side note, don't love the idea of gendered items, etc. Can we move on from the pink and blue BS anyway? Sorry, it's irrelevant. You are not the arsehole. BB says not the arsehole and I don't know how Sierra possibly got anyone on her side. She was clearly in the wrong and unbelievably petty and calculating. Any stress or fallout related to this is 100% her sole responsibility. Stick with Selena and enjoy your sweet nephews. Random says in quotes, they're also telling me that Sierra's health is at risk from all the stress and if something happens to her first and possibly only baby, I am at fault. Then says, she switches Selena's baby gender envelope because she is jealous and wants extra stuff, yet you're the one at fault. Selena is also pregnant. Why is no one worried about her stress levels? And quotes again saying, Sierra on the other hand got the whole family on her side. And says, is Sierra the golden child of the family? Most people will be angry at her, yet your family is on her side, not the arsehole. Jam Cakes Pumpkin says not the arsehole, Sierra's kinda selfish and she should see a therapist. It is worrying that she made her sister spend so much money, not to mention that she played with feelings of Selena and her husband. And one more from maybe a walrus who says not the arsehole, you should never feel forced to cover for horrible people's lies. Absolutely true. And I didn't understand the family either in this one, why would they think they need, unless Selena somehow manipulated them and told some other additional lies to get them on her side. I don't understand why the family would back her up. It makes no sense to me. What she did in this situation was incredibly toxic. But what are your thoughts on this story? What are your thoughts on today's collection of stories? As always, I would love to hear them in the comments below if you have a moment of your time to share them. If you do love a Reddit story, don't forget to click that subscribe button and that notification bell too to be notified when we do post. We usually post a couple of times a day. Thank you so much for your precious time out of your day. It means the absolute world to me. And on the screen right now, there is another playlist which you can get involved with. And Am I the Arsehole Stories? As I said every single time, I've got over a thousand videos on this channel as I speak right now. Plenty to get involved with, plenty to keep you busy. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.